Hello. Welcome once more to Mark's Messy Garage. I did some work in the garage yesterday and unfortunately the camera footage just wasn't there. I did quite a bit of work. But what I've been doing Prior to that is I've got to the stage now where I can start to reassemble the engine. So it's quite a pivotal sort of moment really. Everything is ready to start reassembly. The block has liners in all eight bores. They have all been bored to 15 thou. I have a set of good 15 thou pistons and rings. The cam has been cleaned up, I've filed the gears where there was any damage and I've cleaned all the, cleaned all the, all the exhaust lifters are from this engine, all the inlet ones came from another engine. The rods have all been resized, they were all a few thou down on the, on the pins. I've got all the um, valve keepers. There's all the valves, all assembled up with the springs. I've also cleaned the crank. I've got to do a final clean on the um, all the bearings areas, but I've cleaned the actual metal work of the crank to get the worst of the cruddiness off it. What I intend to do now is um, fit the valves, because there's a couple of things that I wanted to show. One of the things that I I can show you is that I've modified my engine stand. I've put another hole in it that makes it closer to vertical. There, I've drilled another hole there. So it made it easier for putting the cam in. You can just sort of put it in nice and easy like that. I've got the lifters on the table over here in, in the correct order. So I'll, I'll start with number one. This is number one, isn't it, down here? Lovely. I've cleaned all these in the sun. Every, everything that I could get in it, I've, I've put in the sonic, uh, sonic cleaner. I'm using this type on the exhausts. They were what were in the engine when I got it. I had um, a 21 stud engine. That I bought for next to nothing because it was all got blocked frost damage. I stripped the end, I stripped it down, and these are the lifters out of that. This um, chainsaw oil, bar and chain oil, is uh, clingy. So I thought it would make a good oil for, um, you know, assembling the engine. Did I put any on the bottom of that? I can't even grab hold of it. I tried to pull it out then, but I couldn't even pull it out. I'm just putting some on the bottom and then smearing it around the side. Okay, there's all the followers in. Looking good. Right, I found the plug, so I'll put the plug in the back. There's the plug for the back. There's the plug for the back. It's a little short one. If the front one won't go in, I'll have to... Um, 
that big air off again or at least loosen it. Okay, no need to go mad with that because it can't come out. It's covered by that other th other thing. Let's see if that front plug will go in. Oh yeah, just just went in. Just about. Little bit awkward, but I can do it up. A moment to sort of slide the screwdriver to the one side. I need to tighten it. Try a different screwdriver. It's gone down below the surface a fair bit. Well, it's a taper, you see, so you've got to do it, you know, you've got to do it tight, haven't you? Okay, that'll do. No need to go mad. I'll put this in to seal off the oil passage at the front there. That's the uh, oil pressure relief valve. Right then, let's assemble up the valves. Let's start off with number one. Again, I'm, I'm going to use this this um, these timing marks. I know when this is down that number one valves are closed so it's easier to fit them when they're closed. I've got this English valve tool that's a little bit more dainty than the, the big modern one. It's got quite a nice bit of subtle shaping to it. Um, for those not aware you have to put, put the tool through the spring and engage it in two grooves in the um, in the guide. So I'll start putting them in, so you can see how it's done. But then I'll show you a couple of things that I found very useful, and I'll show you a couple of little tricks. Again, I'm not an expert. I've only done this a couple of times, but in doing this, just a few times I've, I've learned a couple of little lessons and one of them is to um, well I'll, sh I'll show you the lessons put the, put the guide tool in give it a little twist to line it with the slots and just tap it in there, and that pulls the guide down. So I'm going to get ready with a the horseshoe clip. Get ready with the horseshoe clip. Lever it up. Stick it in. Now that hasn't gone in. There, that's in. No, it ain't. Just if it's not fully in, just that's it. Tap it home like that. Okay. 
that's how you do the exhaust now I'll put the inlet in then I'll show you an alternative way of doing the inlet what you do you have to you kind of wind the spring so that the the grooves there are in line with the coils of the spring and you have to make sure that the split on the guide is kind of in that direction so that you've got a groove both sides so then you go in like that line it up just a very gentle tap just saves a lot of shoving get your horseshoe clip ready push insert let go that's it right now I'll show you a little trick so let's imagine that you're stripping this down you've got a Align this with the grooves, come in, tap, 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 pull it down, grab the thing, pull it out, out it comes. But there's actually, I'll put it back in again. There's a, an alternate, oh, this bloody stand. Come here. The phone's going flat now. But there's an alternative thing you can use, and I've, I use this on this engine. This tyre lever has a lip like that, and what I've been able to do is going down the port put that lip against the guide you can lift it pull the clip then out she comes and I find it easier I find it easier and quicker than trying to do it using the um, using the valve guide tool that's in and out in a matter of seconds no problem so I'm going to continue doing those things there all the valves you don't need to see them all but you can see how I've just done that and I've showed you an alternative thing there I'll show you one other thing this is the next inlet valve. I'll show you another little trick. Right. So there's the. I've never done this before, but I, I saw it in in a book, the, the rebuild manual. If you put the valve, the lifter like that, put the spring over, put the caper on, like that. Because these are just stock springs, you can bring the guide back like that, and it just, that's it, it saves having to use a compressor. And I'll fit this one using my um, tyre lever because it's an inlet. And this, this thing with the tyre lever can sometimes be used for stripping down one where you can't quite get a good grip with the tool when it's a bit tight you don't want to go mad though let me just warn you you don't want to go mad but for certainly assembling one up where everything's nice and uh, easy you know it's a good way to do it right okay I'm gonna have a little break because uh, I've got something I need to do oh yeah that was it yeah well, what I should have done is done it in order that's one you do five around about here, like that. So I should have done number five. And then you go 
1548637 following that order because they're both closed I've turned it round so you can kind of see down in hopefully Okay, I'll just show you inside. There, you can see inside, can't you? Just double checking that they're all in place. Like that. Now what you want to do is avoid turning the cam as much as possible. Where am I pointing? I was pointing at the wrong place. You know, you just do a full visual check that they're all in place. And you can see down the guide, the, down the guide, down the port there, you know, where you can, you can imagine it pushing down on the guide there. Nice, good. Okay. And then, you only need to turn the cam to there. And that's in the right place to mate up with the, with the crank there's the mark so that cam has only been turned once and you want to avoid turning it any more than that okay right good so crank then so what I'm going to do is turn the engine up the other way and clean the main bearings and put the main bearings in and then clean all the bearing surfaces on the crank. They have already been cleaned, but kind of do a, a double check clean on them. Okay. I'm going to squirt some oil on the cam. This is, um, again, as I'm, I'm always saying rightly or wrongly, this is... Um, chainsaw oil it's thick and it clings so I think it's suitable for that might be wrong I don't know what you don't want to do is put lots of bits of fluff and stuff down in there I'm not much of an engine builder to be honest and any engine builders are probably engine again this is just me trying to restore this engine to running order anything that's still serviceable is remaining in place I'll show you the um, cam and lifters. I mean, they're not absolutely perfect, but they look, you know, shiny enough and oily enough. You can see some marks, but I imagine they'll still run okay for a low 
you know, low performance engine, which this is going to be. Trying to be as clean as I can. They do look better. I'm using that elbow grease degreaser in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. It seems to be doing a good job. Okay, now. Okay, Mark. How do you know which is this? This one's the one for there then. Well, because that's got a groove there, hasn't it? I've just looked on the back and you can see the pattern of the groove there. I'll just double check that that there isn't anything that can come off. Just take that little, there's a little lump or something. No, it ain't a lump, it's a little pit actually, okay. Make sure there's no lumps on it. Okay. That can go in there. No, I put them in dry. I suppose, I suppose you're supposed to put them in dry. What, you wouldn't have an oil film on the other side, would you? Wouldn't serve any purpose. I'm going to give the backs of the bearings a quick run on the wire wheel. Shouldn't really work over the engine, should I? I want to make sure there's no little bits of rust or anything on them. Okay, they look okay. There was some rust on that edge there, so I've had to kind of polish it off quite heavily. The, f the, the front was the worst, so I imagine the ones with the rust was the front. Well, that one and that one look like the least worn. And that one looks like it matches that. And that one looks like it matches that. So, this one and this one can go on the bottom. So, these can go on the top. And that's the one with the more rust, so that can go here. That's the one with the rusty edge, rather. So that can go there. And this one can go here. And I think I'm going to switch this one as well. Because this one looks less worn than the other one. I might just give this a quick whiz on the wire wheel as well. That'll put a fresh face to the thrust now. Just kind of trying to eke them out. You know, eke them out as best I can. Okay, good. I've cleaned the I've cleaned the crank. 
I'll clean them again. My, my thinking is that the quicker I can get it buttoned up, the less chance of damage there is. So let's put some oil on these bearings. Right, I'm just going to get this and drop it in. But what I want to do, what I want to do is get the mark aligned. Yeah, okay. Number one cylinder is here, isn't it? Always getting mixed up when the engine's upside down. Okay. So the throw has got to be towards there. This will all make sense in a minute. So I want to pick it up like that. You can tell I'm an engineer, can't you? I'm hoping to just drop it into the right place, you see. Okay. Oh, come on, be honest. Oh dear, I don't know how I do it for the money. Okay, now look, this is, I won't cut this or edit it, but I kind of work that out. And look, can you see the marks are aligned? That's because I knew that that had to be aligned with that when number one was on top dead centre. So I made a mental note to hold the crank such that that was in that position there. That throw was like on the... No this is the number one bore there. So I'm really pleased with that. That was good, wasn't it? Blow my own trumpet now. Not a fluke. I tried to do that and it worked. Here's a handy hint. An engine mount bolt, 716th UNF. Makes a great handle for lifting the crank. For lifting the crank like that. Right then, I'm gonna put the main caps on. Except I'll only place this one in place because I'm going to have to get some sealant to go there. Unless I just use a bit of Hylomar. Mm, I don't know. I think we could use RTV these days, can't we? So. I don't know if you remember what I said, but if you, you look for the one that's central. There. The bolt hole is central. And that one is, and that one isn't. And you can sort of see it on that side, look. Can you see that that hole is kind of... They are actually the same width, interestingly, but... Can you see that this hole is offset? Well, the one with the offset hole is the front one. And this one is the middle one. And this one... That piece there, this piece here, goes towards where that thing is on the block side, so it goes that way around. I've got no real way of telling which bearing is which, I'm just going to cross my fingers. Okay, so that's in there. Let's put some oil on it. Put some oil on the bearing. So that goes to that side there. And 
and that goes nicely home like that. And this one goes in here. And the bolt hole is offset towards the rear, so the bigger dimension goes towards the front. There, slots in nice. It wouldn't actually slot in if it was the wrong way around. I don't think it would any. I might do, I'm not sure. Right, let's um, just put this one in place, just to keep all the parts together. Put some oil on it. I didn't put any oil on that front one, did I? That hole's a bit dirty, I'm going to just clean that a bit. I'll just rest that there for now. These have all been cleaned. Top quality bolts, no need to use new ones. Let's just go old school and just use a Tommy bar. Oh, hang on a minute. I need to put some oil on this one down tonight. I'm not going to try bumping it up with the centre one bolted down. I found that just bringing the crank up is the easiest way to get these off. Put some oil on there. Clingy oil. Better. Right, okay, that'll do for now. I've got to take the dog out. See you in a bit.